She's not even two years old yet, but she's taller than me. Giraffes are the tallest mammals in the world. And their legs are so long, it looks like they're on stilts. And you would think baby giraffes have a hard time of taking their first steps. But when they're born in the wild, it only takes them half an hour before they're standing up and they can walk from just a day old. Which is incredible. For some baby animals, just standing up can be tricky. First stop, Kenya in Africa. Look at these elephants. Aren't they magnificent? You see those big ears? That's how you know they're African elephants. African elephants have the biggest ears in the world. Elephants are great mums. They have really close families. An elephant family is a herd. Look, it's a newborn baby, an elephant calf. She's only a few minutes old. Incredible. She hasn't even stood up yet. It's hard standing up when you're as heavy as an elephant. So Mum's there to lend a helping hand. Or a trunk. Thanks, Mum. Time for a nice drink of milk. Yummy. She'll get milk from Mum until she's three years old. She's mastered standing. What about walking? Whoops, steady. There's a lot of elephant for a young one to control. I think she's getting the hang of it. All the grown-ups in the herd will help take care of this young calf. It's like living with your aunties all the time. Trouble is, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. Now she knows how to walk, she wants to explore. Careful, you mustn't leave the safety of the family. Because when the family gets ready to go, you have to go with them. Come on, you can do it. It's pretty tough being a newborn elephant, but Mum will always be on hand to help you get over life's stumbling blocks. It's over to Australia next. The most comfy place to hit a ride is in a special holdall called a pouch. G'day! And kangaroo mums have one each. It's like a built-in baby carrier. They've got those fantastic back legs. They're huge and they bend the wrong way. That's what makes them really good at hopping. Hop, hop, hop. It's a really good way to get around. And kangaroos need to be good at that because they live in Australia. And Australia is huge. Kangaroos are easily the biggest animals to get around by hopping. They don't just use those wacky legs. Without those tails, they'd be falling all over the place. Kangaroo babies are called joeys. Really, all of them. Not Tom or Dave or Peter. Joey. As soon as they're born, the joeys climb into mum's pouch so they can grow bigger. But kangaroos aren't the only animals with a pouch. This is a wombat. She's got one. And the honey possum. They're only half as big as a mouse, but they still have a pouch. And koalas. They've got one too. Lots of people call them koala bears, but they're not bears. All these animals are called marsupials. 
marsupials are the only animals to have a pouch. And the best known of all is the big hopping kangaroo. Hang on! Kangaroos jump everywhere. So why don't the babies jump out, I hear you ask? Well, it's because Mum has a special muscle that keeps her pouch shut and her joey safe. So it's a bit like a seatbelt, really. A pouch may be really comfortable, but getting out takes a bit of practice. There you go. Oops, oh, be careful. This joey is not very fast now, but when it's bigger, it'll be faster than an Olympic sprinter. Boy, watch out! And it'll be able to leap really high. How high? Well, if we were playing football, it'll be able to jump right over the goal. Whoops, keep practicing. But while it's still small, it'll stay near Mum. Because the really great thing about her pouch is you can hop back in whenever you get too tired from all that hopping around. Ah, thanks, Mum. Oh. <laughs> Hello, I'm Andy. And this is a baby peafowl, or chick. Now, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet. If it is a boy, it'll be a peacock. And if it's a girl, a peahen. I'm just about to give it its breakfast. But in the wild, it'll follow its mum around and learn what to eat. Young animals have lots of clever ways to get their breakfast. Let's go to California in North America. Many animals rely on their parents to get breakfast for them. Like this sea otter pup. She and her mum are inseparable. They can't play all day. It's time for breakfast. In you go, Mum. Now it's Pup's turn. She's not so keen. Her Pup does know how to swim, but it's much nicer getting a ride with Mum. She'll have to swim on her own if she wants to eat because Mum needs to dive down into the seaweed to fetch food. The young pup hasn't learned to dive yet, but she doesn't mind hanging around up here while Mum goes to rustle up some breakfast. Sea otters love to eat shellfish like crabs, mussels and snails, and all of them are covered in a hard shell. Before they can eat, Mum has to find a way to crack the shell. Pay attention now, while Mum shows you how it's done. The side of a boat makes a pretty good shell cracker. The rocks aren't bad either. Hmm, seafood. Now it's time for her pup to try. She's got the right idea, but that wood is much too soft. So Mum shows her again. You see? Oh dear. Now the pup is using a rubber tyre. Well, that's even softer than the wood. This could take a while. Never mind, you won't go hungry. Mum will keep getting breakfast until the pup has learned how to crack open shells herself. Good old mum. Now we're off to Antarctica. From the top of the world to the bottom of the world. More baby animals are waiting to take their first swim in an icy cold sea. 
These are Adelie penguin chicks. They live near the South Pole, where it gets really chilly. That's why they're covered with all those soft, fluffy feathers. To keep them warm. It's a bit like a penguin woolly jumper. Penguins get all their food from the ocean, so the grown-ups make regular fishing trips out to sea. Which means, if the chicks want to eat when they get older, they need to learn to swim first. Hang on, hang on. First you need to get rid of all those fluffy feathers and grow some waterproof ones, like this. Oops, missed a bit at the top there. Losing your last few baby feathers certainly makes for some crazy hairstyles. Right, now it's time for your first swim. But where to start? Don't worry, the grown-ups will show you how it's done. Penguins might be clumsy on land, but in the water, they're as graceful as a ballerina. Just look at them go! You have to swim fast if you want to catch fish. Right, chicks, that's how you do it. Now, who's first? Go on, somebody's got to go first. Is it going to be you? Oh, no pushing now. Oops. In he goes. And that one. These rocks are so slippery that there's no turning back. The chicks have no choice but to dive in or fall in. Be careful now. Usually when swimming, you have to learn to keep your head above the water. But the penguin chicks have the opposite problem. They're really good at floating, so they actually have to learn how to sink. But it won't be long before these chicks are as graceful in the water as their parents. I'm not sure they'll ever be graceful out of the water, though. Whoops! Hey! In Antarctica, there are some babies that have a loud voice when they're still little. This ball of fluff is a penguin. He lives in a big group called a colony. These guys are chin-strap penguins. They're called that because it looks like they've got a black helmet strapped to their head. I think Mum must be off getting breakfast. Penguins like fish for breakfast, and lunch, and supper too. She's got to bring breakfast home to her chick. Hope she can find him again. There's so many penguins here. Luckily, our chick has got a very noisy call, especially when he's got an empty tummy. Here she comes. Oh, just look at her go. Right, just that big hill to climb. Oh. Um, maybe putting the colony at the top of a muddy, icy slope wasn't such a good idea after all. Whoops. Oh dear. Whoa, whoa. Wow. Oh. <laughs> it's a pity penguins can't fly. Come on, Mum. Get a grip. She's made it! Oh, well done, Mum. Now all she and the other mums have to do 
managed to find their families again. Shouldn't be too hard. I mean, there's only 150,000 birds here. Um, uh, ah. Good idea, guys. Use that loud voice of yours. Over here, Mum. Everyone knows that mums have great hearing. The penguin's ears are so good. Mum can pick out her own chick's call, even though everyone else is shouting too. See? Clever mum has found them. She came straight to his call. And now he can use that motor mouth for eating rather than shouting. First stop, Antarctica. This super streamlined swimmer is a Weddell seal and she's exploring an icy underwater world. And if you think it looks cold down here, well, it's not much warmer up on top. <sighs> Seals love the water, but they're mammals which means they have to come up to breathe air. Here she comes. Pop! Her pup has been waiting for her on the ice. He's only a few days old, so he hasn't been exploring with Mum yet. Ah, oh, I think he's pleased to see her though. The Antarctic sea ice where these seals live is one of the coldest places on Earth. Seals don't mind the cold though. They've got waterproof fur and a thick layer of fat to keep them warm. And if it gets really cold, well, you can always use mum as a windshield. Ooh, there's even warm milk on tap too. Perfect. But this pup can't stay on the ice forever. It's time to go exploring. Ooh. It's cold when you first get in. Mum makes sure there's a nice big hole in the ice by scraping the ice with her teeth. Ooh. That must be cold on the mouth. She needs to do this every day so they don't get stuck on the ice. Oh, it looks like hard work. Now it's time for the little pup's first ever swim. It's a bit scary. He's going to need to be really brave. Come on. That's it. Things look very different down here. Oh, I think he wants to get back out. Come on, little guy. You can do it. Here he comes. Ah, oh, he's done it. This is just the first of many diving trips this little seal pup will make with his mum whilst he's learning to catch fish. But for now, he can just enjoy exploring this beautiful underwater world. Baby out. 